today what I'm going to talk about on bounds of Fourier coefficients of gas forms, as my title suggests. Uh, this is a report on a recent joint work between tryptonin and Kamen Sangharajan. Uh, before I start discussing about half integer weight modular forms, I would like to briefly recall what happens in the case of integer weight modular forms. So, in, uh, before I start do that, let me introduce your notation. Let, let H, uh, as I have written it down already, is uh, all those complex numbers for which imaginary part is greater than zero to the point carry upper half plane. Q, I will denote by Q e to the power 2 pi i z for z in upper half plane. Gamma will de uh, denote the uh, uh, group SL to Z, all two by two matrices with integer coefficient with determinant one. And gamma naught four is a subgroup of SL to Z, all those elements in gamma for which C is zero naught four. And all, throughout the talk, K will denote an integer strictly greater than one, unless otherwise stated. The strictly greater than one, I will explain why I'm putting it. And later on, uh, second part of the talk, first part of the talk will be k strictly greater than 1, but the second part of the talk, we don't need to bother about it anymore. It will be for all integers k greater than equal to 1. And for throughout the talk, again, I will denote by f, the normalized k eigen class form of weight k for gamma. And fz will uh, will have a Fourier expansion as uh, if it is invariant under translation, which will denote by a f n q to the power n. And AFN will be called the Fourier coefficients of F at infinity. So let me start with the question I want to uh, discuss in this talk. So what we are interested about, what can you say about bounds of AFN, or rather absolute bound? So the famous result of Delhi, what you have about Delhi, 1973, will tell us that we know that AFN is bounded by dn into the power k minus 1 by 2 for all n greater than equal to 1, where dn is sum of devices. And I should mention this is this was Ramanujan conjecture for tau function in 1916. And later it was conjectured by Peterson for arbitrary k eigen forms. So okay, what do we know about this bound of AFN? We know an upper bound. And we see that in this upper bound, this function d is there. So We know that the function d, uh, dn, takes value 2 at prime numbers. On the other hand, it takes a value also, okay, dp is 2 when p prime, and dn is greater than exponential, c log n, i log log n, for infinitely many natural numbers. The natural question it leads to, so, so we know that there is an upper bound. The question we want to address, can we replace this dn by an absolute constant? So, can we bound AFN over the power k minus 1 by 2 by an absolute constant? As opposed to the function d. The result of Ranke answers this question. Ranke in 1973 proved that if you take dim soup as n tends to infinity, 
a 10 by n to the power k minus 1 by 2 is plus infinity. So he answers that no, you cannot bound this by an absolute constant. In fact, Rankine's result is also true not only for AK eigenforms, for any non zero cost forms. So this result was improved by Professor Ralph Murthy in 1983. He showed that the inequality a then by n to the power k minus 1 by 2 strictly got that exponential c log n by log n. This holds for infinity many. Here, c greater than f zero is an absolute constant. Result of telling that it is bounded by dn, which we also know that it is uh, less than or equal to exponential to some constant time log n by log log n. So this result of Ramuthi proves that this result shows that Delin's bound is optimal. other than the constant. C. So we see that the results in case of half integer weight modular form, the Fourier coefficients about the bounds of these Fourier coefficients, uh, we understand them quite well. I should also mention that uh, Ramurthy proved that one holds This result for any non zero class. Both these results of Rankin and Ramurthy, after proving for Hecke eigenforms, one uh, constructs a nice basis, and from that you show it, it is true for any arbitrary non zero class. Forms. So, okay, so we understand the results about integer weight modular form Fourier coefficients, the bound of Fourier coefficients uh, reasonably well. Now, one would also like to investigate, and now one would like to investigate what we will know uh, if we want to understand the Fourier coefficients of half integer weight modular form. So, let me just uh, introduce a few more notation before I start talking about the results. So, throughout, let G the non zero class form of half integer weight k plus half. Remember, my k is now strictly greater than one for gamma. Naka. Also, it will denote the Fourier, the Fourier expansion of G of Z by C G of N, Q to the power N, and then the one quarter. This is the Fourier expansion of G at infinity. And it is a fourth law conjecture. And we'll, I'll try to convince by the end of this lecture that this conjecture doesn't indeed make sense. Um, so this is the fourth one. For any epsilon greater than zero, the 
mode of CG of n is less than the way of sum in g n to the power k by 2 minus 1 fourth plus epsilon. Note that the weight is k plus half, so half of that weight but plus epsilon for all n greater than equal to 1. And here we have this constant because I am writing this result for an arbitrary cusp form. This a epsilon g is a constant which depends. only on epsilon and g. So in, in analogy to integer width, to integer width case, we'll call this conjecture as Ramanujan Peterson conjecture. And refer to this conjecture. So this is what uh, naturally one asks oneself, uh, that in case of integer weight, you have the weight k minus one by two, do you expect plus epsilon, do you expect the same thing in case of half integer weight? And this was a folklore conjecture. And the answer of this, conje uh, this conjecture is still unknown. This conjecture is still open. We do not know. More surprisingly, we do not even know a single example for which this conjecture is true. In fact, uh, though the half integer weight modular form, the special kind of half integer weight modular form, we have theta, in, in, or in other words, the theta function has been studied for a long, long time. Uh, it was not very clear before the fundamental work of uh, Shimura, or Walsh-Poger, or Conan Zagier, how to study the Fourier coefficients of half integer weight modular forms. And so, let me start with the work of Shimura which first gave the non-trivial connection between half integer weight modular forms and their Fourier coefficient and linked it to the Fourier coefficient of integer weight modular forms. So I, I, will, I will only quote the result, which is a, uh, which follows from the work of Shimura. So, for this, from the work of Shimura, Let T be a positive scattered integer if G is a Hecke eigen cast form. of weight k plus r for gamma not 4 then there exists a Hecke eigen cross for of integer weight of weight 2k again eigen cross form of weight 2k so that the coefficients are related by this relation. Cg of t and square will be related with Cg of t times d divides n mu of d, mu is the Mobius function, t by d 
3 to the power k minus 1 af of m by d. Recall that af is the coefficient of f. So if you look at this uh, statement, uh, this relation 3, so we can clearly see if we know, hence if we know that true, 2 is true, sorry, 3 is true for all CGT where T is square free. Then Deling's bound will tell you that uh, the conjecture is true. Oh, will imply the conjecture. So it is sufficient to look or on the uh, look at or investigate this uh, square free values. But when you say three is true, you mean the you mean the Ramanujan conjecture or that or actually three? Oh, no, no, so not three. The conjecture two. Sorry, I made a mistake. Two. Uh, I want to say that if I know the conjecture. Uh, here, here. No, no. I've not given any. This is a conjecture, a folklore conjecture, or what Ramanujan Peterson conjecture. If it is true, true. If two is true for all CGT from the relation three, we can see that if we know the conjecture uh, for the coefficients like this, and then we apply Delin's bound for this, and we can see that, that con then our conjecture uh, two will be, this conjecture will be true. So we just need to prove this conjecture only for square free values. Thank you for pointing that out. Okay, so before I go to the, as I said, the first result of Shimura, which tells us we can reduce the question to square free integers. Uh, now I will uh, use another fundamental uh, result which links uh, half integer weight modeler from Fourier coefficients to integer weight modeler forms, or rather special values of, of twisted special values of modeler L function, uh, the famous work of Walsperger and the explicit version by Conan and Zabi. So if I will come to this, uh, I will talk about this result uh, for, of Walsperger's formula in, uh, in detail in the later part of the talk. Let me just tell you uh, here, uh, if we know what's for your formula, which I will define, uh, I will state clearly later, plus convexity bound for modular real values, twisted, this will prove that the coefficient CGN is less than equal to the epsilon G into the power K by 2 d of k for all in greater than equal to one here as before this depends only on epsilon h so a quick remark this bound cannot be improved in case of uh, if we come, uh, if we take forms which comes from the space generated by subspace generated by theta function, this form cannot be improved if the form G belongs to the subspace of theta function. Uh, Charlie, just to be clear, the, the bound you get here um, yes. is, is off the conjecture by a quarter, is that right? No. Yes, it's like a kind of a hickey bound. Okay. Uh, 
And this is the reason I was taking I, this uh, remark is important uh, to say that why I take K to be strictly greater than one. Because when it is a half integer weight uh, space of modular forms, it is a famous result of Sayer and Stark, which uh, tells that every form, uh, this whole space is spanned by theta functions with character. And I have restricted myself uh, for the whole talk uh, to level one. And in case of level one means in a half integer weight case, it's level four. And um, this is true, these res many of these, most of these results are true for, uh, I mean, arbitrary level. I'm not going to quote them unless that is required for that. Okay, so this bound is strict uh, for in this case, in the, this bound cannot be absolute in case, uh, in case of, uh, so one avoids this conjecture, one is to avoid uh, the space of uh, theta functions. Okay. The first non-trivial result in this direction was by Ivanich. Non-trivial result. And his proof is quite different than the proof of all the things which are we using today. This result in nineteen eighty seven, he showed that for any non zero first form, G of weight K plus half. For gamma naught four. Okay, there is a condition. This is to make the form in some sense unique. If uh, for this such form, he proved that C G of T is T is square free number is less than equal to A K mod T to the power K by two minus one by twenty eight D of T log 2t squared for all square feet. And here ak is greater than zero, depends on the amount. This result was uh, improved recently by Petro and Young, and they proved in 2019. Sorry. Let G be a KKI can pass form. with k plus r for gamma naught 4 then for any odd square feet integer positive integer And epsilon greater than zero, one alpha calling power. So you can improve the constant the epsilon g. They have not normalized the form, so they are k by 2 minus 1 by 12 plus epsilon. Where as usual, k epsilon g depends on the on epsilon. So this was improved in 2019. Uh, so th these are the bounds known. Uh, I will come back to the bound this uh, for square free integer later by a recent result of sound and gradual uh, when it comes uh, to the fundamental discriminant part.
but before this uh, before i talk about all other results which i is going to i would going to just add next let me just introduce a couple of notations because that will help me to uh, write less number of words and maybe more mathematical expression so what i'm going to do i'm going to denote sk plus half by sk plus half c with complex vector space of course forms of weight k plus half for gamma naught k and s2k the complex vector space of cus forms of weight 2k for And let me now come to the main part of my uh, talk, where we will be concentrating only on the uh, Conan plus space. Uh, the reason is this plus space is isomorphic to the level one space by Conan Shibura map. So let me introduce the notation, and I don't need to bother about taking k strictly greater than one. I can take all k. So let this k plus half be the Conan plus space defined as follows. those elements in sk plus half for post Fourier coefficients cg of n is 0 if minus 1 to the power k n is not congruent to 0 and 1 not 0. Okay. So using elementary means and by applying kk relation and not going by the worst for just formula uh, in a joint work with Conan, we show in 2019, this was just using the K operators, we show that if we take in SK plus half plus space, K from now onwards will be K greater than equal to 1, if we take a non-zero form, arbitrary cause form, then we can prove lame so n tends to infinity cg of n n to the power k by 2 minus 1 four is plus n. So this can be thought of as a half integer beta analog of Rankine's result. In fact, one this was, as I mentioned, this result was uh, not using a, it's just using the properly the Hecke operators. In fact, if one uses shattered. Can I ask why is this there is a minus one to the K there? Yes, uh, because you will see uh, quickly, you will, I will show that when, when it comes to fundamental discriminants, so you will have the, these coefficients will become zero and non-zero. We are looking at only those spaces. Uh, and okay. those space corresponds to uh, the Conan Shimura map to S2K1. So this is a subspace of SK plus half. If you look at this subspace generator, K is, uh, says K is not fixed. So if K is even and odd, I can get K both even or odd, depending on my CG of N is defined. There's zero or non-zero. And you will see that it may, it, it, there is a reason because you, you will have uh, for every square free integer fundamental discriminant when you will come to Walsford's formula, uh, because this coefficient CG of mod D is related to special values of L functions and unless my minus one to the power k d is strictly greater than zero, uh, the value will be, if it is strictly less than zero, the L values is zero. And in that case, there is no walls for your formula. So you, you want to have a subspace of the SK plus half, which is isomorphic to the space of S, S2K1. There is a result, there are other subspaces, which is also isomorphic to S2K1, but the, uh, their properties are not so nice to investigate all these uh, 
other properties of a key operator and other operators is this the question you are asking sorry hello yeah so n n can be negative is that right yes k can be uh, it's k can be even on odd so n can be negative no 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 sorry we are sorry what are you saying in that case n will not be negative n uh, then you take minus n is this so n is always positive but n is this congruent to then will be a uh, one mod minus uh, it's a zero and minus one mod which is oh there is a sorry so i actually i i missed i misread i just looked at zero i didn't see the one at all that that was the problem so, sorry uh, uh, where is is it there oh, it's gone i can't see my presentation anymore is no we clear? can't we cannot either uh, uh, so try sharing it again my hand i think that's it mm -hmm. Yes, we can see it now. Oh, we're starting to see it. Is it okay? Yep. Yeah. So uh, this one zero. No, it's n is always positive. N is not negative. K is even on odd, depending on this condition zero one or uh, three mod four. Yeah. So, sorry, I, I had just missed. I mean, I had just okay. looked at zero and I couldn't see the one, so I got completely confused. That's that's the reason. Okay. So I've, everything is fine. Yeah. And this, uh, the relation, uh, the one of the reason to consider this space is, uh, it's not quite, I uh, will see, I mean, when I talk about the one force space theorem, it will be clear that uh, this relation is, uh, it's not something which is arbitrary, which might look as far, I mean, in the, at the first glance. Okay, let me get back to the results. So, but in fact, if we use shadow it, then we can show. If you take again a non zero form is k plus half the non zero. In CG of n, it's strictly written n to the power k by 2 minus 1 4 exponential c log n to the power. infinitely many and here I should say k is uh, if I forget also k is greater than equal to 1 always here c greater than 0 and 0 less than d less than half or absolute constants So to few quick remarks. If G is not necessarily an arbitrary form, if I take is a Hecke eigen form, this result was known. Then theorem one and theorem two follow from the work of Hofstein and Lockham. If G is again a Hecke eigen form, If you have the bound k is 0 mod 4, n is t n equal to t r square free. Okay, they are square free integers. Then theorem 1. Oh, 
also follow from the work of Saundarajan and Pia. Okay. Now let me come to the uh, work which I want to come to the come to the result which really I want to describe today is of our recent work with uh, Conan and Sondarajan. So for that, let me introduce few more notations. But I, I these are the last set of notations. Really. So if G See, we have talked about uh, Conan uh, Shibura map, which relates uh, in half integer weight modular form to integer weight modular form. So, if I take a take a eigenform, this is the Conan Shibura map, which is the modification of Shibura map. This is a Hecke eigenform. Then, under this Conan Shibura map, the corresponding Hecke eigenform in integer weight case will always denote by f. If it is g. Corresponding Hecke eigenform under the convention of the map. And aim is to investigate CG of mod D at parameter discriminant where T is a parameter discriminant. It's one or discrete of an imaginary quadratic field. with the property absolute value of d minus one to the power of k d is currency. And we will denote by chi d the positive the required to describe the result. And before that the once for just result, the, the primitive character will denote this by the primitive character, primitive quadratic character module. Corresponding to the fundamental discriminant. And will the L series attached to the dth quadratic twist of F is defined by. of n, chi d of n, into the series converges absolutely for sigma greater than the real part of S, which you do with sigma, greater than k plus half, extends Analytically, to see and satisfy the following functional equation. So, let me 
the fifth quality of this is the computational function. Is, F is weight two k. Is that right? Uh, F is weight two k. Yes. Okay. Because my g has weight uh, k plus r. Yes. Yep. Okay. This gamma s l a chi d of s is minus one to the power k chi d of minus one chi d two k minus s and this if minus one to the power k times d is strictly less than zero we see then if chi d of k is equal to zero in the complement case when minus one to the power k t equal to one zero this famous uh, explicit version of Walsh Hodges formula will tell you so explicit version Both these results were in 1980. So, due to the following relation, if I put it in the other page, CG of mod D whole square K minus 1 factorial multiplied by K mod of G squared more d to the power k minus half in f kd k where non g non if arbiters are nodes of g and f respectively And here both G and F are Hecke eigenform. This relation is for Hecke eigenform. So in order to understand, so this will again it will tell you if I want to understand a upper bound or lower bound of this quantity, it is sufficient to understand the upper bound and lower bound of this quantity. Okay. So definitely for uh, one would like to look at these special values of L function. But now, if it is, this is true in case of Hecke eigenform, this relation. So when, uh, when the G is a arbitrary non-zero cast form, it is not even clear why should there be a fundamental discriminant uh, D for which C G of mod D is not equal to zero. So when G is an arbitrary non-zero form, is not even clear cg of mod d not equal to zero for infinite thing d with minus one to the power k d is strictly greater than zero there exists one d such d this was proved by conan and it follows from the work of uh, Luo and Ramakrishnan, Dinaka Ramakrishnan, they are working in 1997, will tell when G is non zero arbitrary form, which is a linear combination of two Hecke eigenforms. non the linear combination to take eigen forms then there exists in 
finite linearity with minus 1 to the power k d equal to 0 such that cg of mod d not equal to 0. So this result was improved by Abhishek Shah in 2013 to show that if you take an arbitrary form, non-zero form, then there exists infinitely many fundamental discriminants t with minus 1 to the power of k d equal to 0 for which cg of mod d not equal to 0. So the point in this is these are not eigenforms, is that the point? Yes, and in case of eigenforms, it is a straightforward way of showing the non vanishing of this L value. will tell you the coefficient is not, there are infinitely many we know, and so there we know infinitely many being non no, it's non zero. But the moment you take a arbitrary form, it becomes linear combination, so it doesn't work. Uh, so, but we'll show that, uh, yeah, one can deal with situations like that still, and that's the result I'm going to state. Here. So, how much time I have? Uh, you have uh, 10 minutes. Okay. So what we show, let's take a non-zero form. Then our first proof is uh, quite different than all other proofs. And we reprove the result of Shaka. We are infinitely many fundamental discriminants. Three with minus one to the power k d greater than zero, such that cg of mod d not equal to zero. In the second part, we show that not only they are non-zero, they take large values. They take certain get out of zero, given and xp large. There are at most x to the power 1 minus epsilon fundamental discriminants t with minus t between x and 2x, x less than minus 1 to the power k d less than equal to 2x such that cg of mod d is greater than equal to mod d to the power k by 2 minus 1 fourth exponential 1 by 82 square root of log mod d so you know Apart from the constant this result is constant one by eighty two, only one power. Obtained is also better in even in the case of AK eigen form. Obtained in B is so best known, even when G is a decay. Sorry, Shali, is this that uh, there are at most this many fundamental discriminants or are there at least this many fundamental discriminants? Oh, 
at least. Okay, and I should mention the second statement. Recently, our work for arbitrary label has been has been improved. Uh, I mean, has been proved, extended by Jasari, Lester, and Chaha. Including extended to arbitrary level. Okay, let me quickly tell what is the, in this case of fundamental discriminants, one knows, one has a better conjecture, uh, which follows from the conjecture of Gonick, uh, Parmar, Gonick and Hume. So it follows from this conjecture. One expects the upper bound to be more due to the over k by 2 minus 1 fourth exponential c log mod d mod log mod d. This is times for all fundamental discriminants. Deal with minus one to the power k d over c, and this known result in this direction is by Rajivu and Swamiraghavan. belongs to SK plus half minimum zero. We can for epsilon under than zero and for all but glow of X fundamental discriminants T between X Minus one to the power k d two x. One has the following bar. C g of mod d. So then g mod d to the power k minus two minus one fourth log of mod d to the power one fourth minus epsilon. As usual, this is depends on the epsilon and g. Okay, now coming back to the result of our result, let me give a quick proof of the result we have. Proof of our theorem, or many steps rather. First, giving uh, so maybe I just write my g is non zero form. So it is k plus half g not equal to zero. So we write g as linear combination of a k eigenforms. E, g, v, r, v is our a k eigenforms. But they are not arbitrary Hecke eigenforms. These Hecke eigenforms uh, corresponding to the normalized Hecke eigenforms F mu in is 2 k.
and then you notice cg of n is nothing but cg of cg nu of n or maybe i'll write it just c nu of n So we want to understand uh, the bound for CG of n. So the first proof or proof of A, we look at this function for, okay, so sigma is nothing but real part of this is sigma is greater than k, k by two plus, if we use hey k bound, we see that this in this region, this uh, the series we are going to write is absolutely convergent, uh, DG of S, which is, I'm going to write it, alpha n by n to the power s then equal to 1 where alpha n is nothing but c of mod d nu m i'll define what is n minus this d i d of n into the power k minus 1 where n is nothing but mod d m square you can see that these are conventional maps so what we realize is that in this domain of absolute convergence this series dgs has two kind of expression so one can write minus one to the power k d dot on zero c of mod d mod d to the power s l of chi d to s minus k plus one. This is one expression, and another expression is l of g nu s. These are the l function attached to the Hoffman Dirichlet model form, and this is the l function attached to the EGM. So what we show in order to, if first we first step, we show that uh, we show DGS is identically zero if only finitely many CG of mod T non zero. So how do we do that? We look at uh, uh, we look at the analytic continuation, the functional equation coming from uh, the Dirichlet L function, and the functional equation coming from if it has finitely many for only C D non-zero, then uh, the finitely uh, that uh, and, and apply the functional equation for the uh, Dirichlet L function and apply the functional equation here, then we see that these are inconsistent, and that forces my DG to be zero. And the next step we show that this is the first step, and the second step we show that again using functional equation, we show that C nu mod d a nu p equal to zero. And then we use the result of Conan existence of a fundamental discriminant for which for the, which uh, this is a CD always and this is true for all. Okay, I should write it down. This is next step we show that using functional equation this is true for all fundamental discriminants t with 4 dividing d minus 1 to the power k d greater than 0 and for all odd primes p so you you use then rankin selberg and the result of conan that uh, we give it, that's this kind of fundamental discriminant is always possible. Uh, you given any G nu, I can find a fundamental discriminant uh, D nu for which this property is satisfied and for which C nu D is not a property. And then we use, of course, then we can use Rankin Selberg and show that this will force these forces G to be zero. So this is the first part of the proof. And the second part of the proof is uh, the second part. Theorem one is deduced from theorem two. We show that, okay. okay so maybe first I deduce it before that. So without loss of generality. We show that lambda one is equal to one and mod of lambda nu less than equal to 1 is for all nu less than equal to 1. Of course, you can divide by the maximum. Then using triangular inequality and Scorsese-Schwartz so 
you get cg of t is greater than equal to c1 of mod t minus mu equal to 2 to r c mu of mod t what we show that we can control this coefficient making one them big one of them being big and rest of them small and this is greater than equal to c1 of mod d minus r minus 1 times using Cauchy Schwartz 2 to r up to square c nu of mod d square to the power of half. Now, if we apply Walsh-Hodges formula, okay, CG of mod t is greater than this constant is the constant in Walsh-Hodges formula. I'm not writing it again in detail. So, if one cut the K over half minus C mod D K minus half mu equal to 2 to R K like mu cal D K to the power half. And then theorem 1 is deduced from theorem 2, theorem 2 is let a greater than 0 be a constant and let us be large. What we show that you can control, so what one can show for any epsilon greater than 0, there are than greater than x to the power 1 minus epsilon fundamental discriminants t with the same kind of conditions x and x minus 1 to the power k d equal 0 such so that but this is the heart of the proof of d of k a L if mu call the k exponential 1 by 40 root log x by root log x and this proof of theorem 2 one uses resonance method some other things I'll stop here. If someone wants, I can give more uh, explanation for the proof.